A report today says the FBI took a document about foreign nuclear capabilities from Mar-a-Lago. While some say it raises grave concerns, others question the report's legitimacy. Here's more on reactions from around the Hill and Trump's response. A Tuesday report by the Washington Post says the FBI seized a document during its August Mar-a-Lago raid describing a foreign government's nuclear capabilities. The newspaper says it got its information from people familiar with the search who wanted to stay anonymous while describing sensitive details of an ongoing investigation. The White House, meanwhile, declines to say whether it has spoken with any other countries on this issue. We don't have uh, any calls to foreign governments to read out at this time. But the latest allegation is prompting heated reactions on the Hill. While some say they need more information... I'm not saying I'm not concerned about the whole situation. I'm just saying I don't have the facts. Republican Senator Lindsey Graham says he's seen this movie before, where reports about Trump working with Russia turned out to be, quote, flat-out false information. That's as Senator Marco Rubio, the top Republican on the Senate Intelligence Committee, says the leak to the media was intentional. When there's an investigation by the FBI or Justice Department, they're not even acknowledging there is an investigation, much less leaking. The only reason to leak to the media is to influence the narrative. Democrats, however, say the report of documents on foreign nuclear capabilities raises great concerns. It is a literal outrage for the president to take this important information down to his home in Florida. I can't believe that more Republicans don't step up and say the same. And the Democratic chair of the House Intelligence Committee says the report begs the question why Trump would take and keep those documents. The former president has previously denied reports that he had nuclear documents at Mar-a-Lago, calling the issue a hoax, just like Russia. Trump has not, however, directly addressed the Tuesday report, but said Wednesday the FBI took his tax records and confidential medical files during its August 8th raid. The Convention of States has conducted a poll following President Biden's speech on September 1st in Pennsylvania. The results are in, and we spoke to Mark Meckler, president of Convention of States. Mark Meckler, thank you so much for joining us again on the Capitol Report. Thanks for having me. Mark, Convention of States conducted a poll following uh, President Biden's speech uh, with that deep red uh, backdrop with the Marines uh, uh, behind him. Uh, the majority of people polled were deeply disturbed by the speech. Um, why is this speech see seeing such pushback, do you think? I think we've never seen before in American history where a president has stood at the podium and taken a strong position against half of Americans specifically. I mean, we're used to political rhetoric where a politician attacks his political opponent. Uh, in this case, it would have been President Donald Trump, but we're not used to seeing American citizens attack directly. That's what this speech was, and it has very dangerous overtones because of that. Mark, uh, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs uh, of Staff, General Mark Milley, issued a statement back in 2020 when he marched across Lafayette Park with the former president. He said he regretted his presence, that it gave the perception that the military was involved in domestic politics. Given the tone, tenor, and backdrop of Biden's recent speech, do you think an explanation or clarification is uh, needed? Yeah, I do think it's needed. In fact, you know, you have the Marines standing behind the president there. This is very clearly a political speech. And even if you listen to pundits on the left and, and people who support the president, even people who liked the speech, they forgive it because they say, well, it was just standard political stump speech. Well, this speech was done on the dime of the U.S. taxpayer. They're not allowed to be political in those speeches. He shouldn't be going after his opponents in those speeches, but that's what he did. So I do think there needs to be an inquiry. Why were the Marines there? They, You know, President Biden has said specifically on the record in the past that he would never use the military as props. In this case, he absolutely and frankly has openly admitted that he was using those Marines as props. There should be an inquiry on that. Mark, President Biden's approval rating does seem to be getting uh, or polling better uh, now that he, he over the past you know few months where it was really low, uh, still relatively low, but better nonetheless at 43 percent. Why do you think that is and should that raise concerns for Republicans heading into November? Yeah, I don't think it should raise concerns. If you look at the actual numbers, I mean, any president below 50% is in big trouble, and he did get a bump. I think that was primarily due to the Dobbs decision, maybe a little bit due to the student loan stuff. But if you look in the last week or so, I think he's begun to trend down. Well, last week to 10 days, 
trend down again. So I don't think Republicans should be concerned. But at the same time, I don't think they should be sanguine either. I think they should be working as hard as they possibly can to get out the vote. Uh, my prediction would be we're going to see the Republicans take the House. The question is, by what margin? And right now, I'd probably throw out 60, 65 percent chance of taking the Senate as well. Mark, we're seeing uh, political groups and nonprofits aligned with the Democratic Party spending tens of millions of dollars on campaigns, specifically across five states' Republican primaries, in order to le elect the candidate they think will be weaker in a general election. What is your take on this type of maneuvering? Yeah, you know, I think it's despicable. And, and you see what they're doing is they're criticizing what they call MAGA Republicans, and then they're spending money to try to elect in primaries MAGA candidates. Well, look, this just isn't going to work in our system of electoral politics. If we're going to fund our political opponents, it's going to get very messy. It's going to be very complicated. I just don't think it works in a functioning democracy, a functioning constitutional republic over the long haul. And lastly, if I could just get your thoughts on the special master appointed in the uh, Trump Mar-a-Lago raid, or at least the decision uh, made to appoint one, does this ultimately help the president? And how big of a win was this for the Trump team? I do think it helps the president. Certainly it delays the investigation. A special, special master, for those who don't know, is just somebody who's going to go through the evidence and he's going to make the determinations whether there's executive privilege applies to any particular documents or uh, whether attorney client privilege applies. So it's going to slow the whole thing down. It stops the investigation, whatever the Department of Justice and the FBI are engaged in. My frustration is that it took so long. The FBI, the DOJ have already gone through all of these documents. The question is now, what are they going to do with the information they have? What we've seen are a bunch of leaks. And the question is, will the leaks continue? But I do think this is a move by the court that absolutely helps the president. Mark Meckler, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. North Carolina Senator Richard Burr made more than $164,000 from well-timed trades after receiving briefings on COVID-19. Burr sold stock weeks before the pandemic arrived in the U.S., and the stock market decline in late February of 2020, according to a newly unsealed FBI document. Burr has been investigated for insider trading. The FBI said there was probable cause to believe that Burr violated the Stock Act, but the Department of Justice dropped the probe in 2020. The new document says that shares held by Burr's wife were sold at the end of January 2020. Just hours before the White House announced that the U.S. was banning travelers from China due to COVID-19. In early February of 2020, Burr co-authored an op-ed stating that the United States was, quote, better prepared than ever before to face emerging public health threats like the coronavirus. Days later, Burr moved to sell nearly all the stock he and his wife held.